Hi there, this is Mr. Dunaway, and I am going to give you a brief tutorial on this particular calculator, the TI30X2S. The numbers are right there. TI stands for Texas Instruments, and this is just the number of it. And this particular model has been around for a little while. It's my personal favorite just because the simplicity of doing fractions with this calculator for, the, for our class is... Uh, by far the most simple that I've come across and I found that when students figure out how to use this calculator uh, life gets a little bit easier for them particularly if you struggle with fractions so this is a tutorial video on how to input fractions and on this particular calculator so um, I hope this is helpful for you if nothing else just watch it and if you don't have a calculator consider going to get it but this does not mean this is the only calculator that you can use because uh, all the calculators these days have a way to input fractions and, and use them. I just find that this one tends to be the most simple. So uh, I'm going to try to teach you how to use this calculator here. Um, and the first thing I want to show you how to do is how to input a fraction. So let's say I have the fraction 3 fourths. Okay, if I want to input 3 fourths into this calculator, well, let me point out where it is that we are working right here. This is kind of the, the magic button right here, this A. B over C button. That particular button is basically the magical fraction button. I'm going to switch to a pencil here because I think you'll be able to see it better. All right, A, B over C, um, that's the, the button we use to input the fraction. So if I want to input 3 fourths as a fraction, I'm going to push 3. I'm going to hit that A, B over C button, and you see this little thing that looks kind of like a comma. That is basically the calculator's way of telling you that that's a fraction bar. 3 fourths, right there. So that calculator is reading this as 3 fourths. If I just hit enter, you can kind of see it. It shows it like a fraction, but that's what it, it's, it's, it's receiving from you when you input it that way. So um, that's the first piece of information you need to know, how to input the fraction. It's at A, B over C. So it kind of looks like a mixed number right there. Okay. Well, with that said, if you want to input a mixed number, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you're going to actually use the same button. So I'm going to clear my calculator out here. And let's say that I want to input 2 and 3 fourths. Okay, so I'm going to use the same button that A, B over C. And I'm just going to input the numbers 2. And I'm going to hit it once. I'm going to get that little comma. Now the numerator is 3, so I'm going to go 2 and 3. Now I want fourth, so I'm going to hit that A, B over C again. And it looks like this. So the calculator knows, since you have two of those commas in there, it knows you're inputting that as a, as a mixed number, okay? And it, if you hit enter, it, it looks like that. It's like two. That really means a unit. You have two holes and three-fourths, just two and three-fourths. So that's what the calculator thinks you're, you're trying to uh, have it do for you. So that's how you input a mixed number. Okay, um, now let's say that I have a mixed number and I want to change it to an improper fraction. All right, well, I'm going to clear it out here so we can kind of go through that those steps again. Let's say I wanted to change 4 and 3 eighths into an improper fraction. Now we know how to do that. You should know to go 4 times 8 is 8, 6, 24, 32, 33, 34, 35 over 8. But let's say we had some big numbers and we wanted a little bit of help. First thing we would do is we would input the number like I just showed you. Input 4 and 3. Hit it again. Eighths. And now what I want to do is I want to change it to improper. Now, if you look, it's probably a little hard to see in the video, but right above the A, B over C, there is a button. There is some blue uh, print that says A, B over C with an arrow, and then it has D over E. Well, that D over E represents uh, improper fraction. Okay, So that means that function right there, means that you can change whatever is in your calculator either to a mixed number or to an improper fraction. Whichever one it is, it'll switch it to the other one. And here's how you do it. Since it's above the A, B over C, it's kind of like shift on the typewriter. So you would hit this button up here, second. Now you should get this little but this little um, second notation on your calculator that's telling you, hey, you hit the second button. Now I'm going to hit A, B over C, but I'm actually doing the the shift function above it, watch what happens when I do that, I just press it right there, you get this, 
what the calculator here is doing, it's, it's asking you, is this what you want to do? It wants to make sure that's what you're doing. Uh, and you can see the mixed and the improper notations with arrows. So they're like, hey, are you trying to switch this? And enter basically means yes. Okay, and there it is, 35 eighths. It's that simple. You just input it, hit shift, and then you can go back and forth. Let's say I had 35 eighths in there, and I wanted to know what that was. Uh, as a, a mixed number, I would do the same thing. I would hit shift, and then I would hit that button again. There it's asking me what I want to do, and there it changed it back to a mixed number. So that function on the calculator will change uh, mixed numbers to improper or improper to mixed, which is nice, and that's something you don't have to worry about. It's something you should understand, but you don't have to completely worry about it. Okay, well, let's say that I now have, uh, let's say I, I did some a math problem and I ended up with this big fraction, but my teacher tells me that I have to reduce the answers, which you do, or simplify them, um, down to lowest terms. So let's watch, look at this one. If we had to reduce 288 over 312, well, the calculator will do that for us, and it's really simple. I'm going to input 288. Now you have to input it as a fraction, not with the division, but with that fraction button, get the comma, 312. All you have to do with this calculator, the TI-30X2S, is hit enter, and voila, it tells you that 288 over 312 is the same thing as 12 thirteenths. Okay, and it does the hard work for you. Right there, simply inputting the, the number and hitting the equal sign. Okay, a couple other things that this can do to make your life easier is let's say you have a decimal. This is often one I see students struggle with. Let's say you have a decimal and you have to change it to a fraction. Well, I picked a really hard one. Let's say I had 0.7 repeating, and then your assignment was to change 0.7 repeating. Now, I know you can't see the decimal point because I hit too many sevens. I'm just trying to show the, tell the calculator, hey, I've got a whole bunch of sevens following the decimal point, but I want to change it to a decimal. I'm sorry, I want to change it to a fraction. So if you look right above that PRB button, you see the F and the D and the arrows pointing? Well, basically that means uh, fraction to decimal or decimal to fraction, whichever one uh, if it's able to do that, it will do it for you. So if I hit the second button, I get that notation, I hit that PRB, and it's asking me, hey, are you trying to change this decimal into a fraction? Again, enter means yes, and there it just told me that 0.7 repeating is the same thing as the fraction 7 ninths. Okay, well, let's say I had the fraction 7 ninths. I'll clear it out here. I'll input 7 ninths again. And let's say, hey, I want to make that a decimal. You could hit second, hit the same thing, and it would do that for you. It rounds it off to eight because it continues going, but it's actually seven repeating there forever and ever and ever. Okay, and then I'll just show you one last thing to try to make the point here. Um, let's say I had this problem right here. Okay. 2 and 3 fourths plus 1 eighth divided by 2 thirds. Well, there's all kinds of work, and you've probably had a problem like that that you've had to work out without a calculator, and it's going to take you some time. You'd have to do no order of operations, right? Keep it, change it, change it. You'd flip that 3 over 2, you'd multiply, and then you would, uh, gosh, you'd have, what, 3 over 16, and then you would have to change this to a mix, uh, to improper, 4 times 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, fourths, and then you'd have to add it, so then you'd have to get a common denominator, so find the the least common multiple of what, four, and what did I say, 16, and then you'd have to convert that, and then add them, and then reduce them. Okay, and you should be able to know the basics of that process, but watch this. If I input this problem, two and three fourths plus one, again, notice I'm inputting it as a fraction. Don't use the division sign to input it, but you will use the division sign here because you want it, you're saying one eighth divided by. See that division sign looks like a fraction bar. That's the only thing I kind of don't like about it. Um, that that can be confusing on the the notation. But it's one eighth, one eighth divided by. So that's the divided by. So to input the two thirds, 
Again, you want to again use the A, B over C. I just did you see how I just input that straight across equals and there it is. The answer is two and fifteen sixteenths. And there you have it. Hey, guess what? If you wanted that as an improper fraction, you'd hit second and you'd hit that improper fraction button. And there it'll do it for you. You want it as a decimal, and you could hit second and hit that fraction to decimal, and it'll do that for you. Or I myself prefer the uh, oh, it's not going to go back at that point for me. Um, hit it the wrong way. But anyway, you can go back and forth from fractions. To, let's try this and see if that will change it. That changed it back to a mixed number. That's what I was trying to do right there. But that's the great thing about this calculator. It's the most simple calculator to do all of those fraction operations that, that you might need to do. I hope this is helpful for you. Again, it's not the only calculator, and I don't get any money from Texas Instruments for this. I just find that it's the most simple one for my students to use, and I hope that's helpful for you. Have a great day.